Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's video, which is a little longer than normal, I uh, will paint the Troll Slayer from the Dive Force pack for the Operation Kalstrom. Uh, this is a very nice model with a lot of details, so we will switch uh, among the lot of colors to try to have really nice details. So sit back, relax and uh, enjoy the video. We will start by priming our model with the Redbone spray. The first color we will apply will be Ashen Grey and we will paint uh, his uh, cloak with it. So this paint is really transparent, so it will take a multiple coats to have an even coat around. Uh, I think I used uh, three very thin coats to get the even coverage. So just let it dry after the first coat. Don't try to paint it again while it's still uh, wet paint on it because you will just uh, move the pigments around and you won't be able to have a nice and even coverage. And this is the look after three uh, coats. Uh, after that I will proceed with base coating his pants. So I will use uh, that World Forest. And this is like, uh, he don't have that many uh, exposed uh, areas of his pants so just uh, two uh, very thin coats uh, will have a uh, good coverage for his armor i will use uh, light sea blue from vallejo and uh, actually he have a lot of areas uh, that will be blue on this model so take your time and try to have a uh, good and even coverage on all of them so just go all around and uh, block all the colors try to be neat so we don't need to do a lot of fixing later uh, for the tabard i use the corn red uh, because I want it to be a little dark red and uh, this color is perfect because it, it, it is red but it it's have a really dark shade uh, on it so one uh, even coverage uh, will do it uh, but do one uh, very thin coat For the black parts, I used a black Templar contrast. Actually, this could be done like few steps before uh, because it's like inside his armor plates. So during this process, I quite messed up my blue parts a little. So I had to go back and do a little tidying it up. Uh, but we will paint uh, with this uh, just the uh, edge of his hammer and uh, all the insides of the armor panels like between the legs and uh, to separate the armor panels. For all the latter parts I use the Rhinox hide. So I just put this paint on my uh, wet palette and added a drop of water to it because it was quite thick. So. Uh, now it flows uh, much better and then I just blocked all the leather straps uh, Before I painted uh, this leather strap on his chest black, but I changed my mind and then uh, I covered it with the rhinos hide as well For these uh, cloth straps that he have on his hammer, I used the Screamer Pink and just uh, painted it in one uh, very thin coat. For the rest of the hammer, I used the uh, Chrome. Uh, if you don't have this color, you can use uh, any bright silver. And as well, with this paint, I painted the buckle. Uh, the middle of his chest as well so only those two details mm -hmm. 
and now I will uh, wash the whole model. Uh, I will use a uh, dark tone mist mixed with a quick shade washing medium. Uh, if you don't have this one, you can use a uh, noon oil and uh, just uh, cover the whole model. Uh, only thing that I will try to avoid is the parts that are still white. But uh, if you cannot do that, it's perfectly fine because we'll go back later and just tidy them up and put them back to the red bone color. So if you don't cover them now, it will be less job to do for you later. Another tip, uh, try avoid uh, pulling of the shade on your cloak. For his uh, face, I used the uh, Gilliman Flash and I applied this in uh, one uh, mid, let's say medium coat because uh, you don't want it to be too thin and you don't want it to be too thick because it will get too dark. So just uh, dry your brush and then collect the excess paint. And uh, for his dreads, I used the uh, Gore Granta Fur and uh, this color I applied in one very thick coat. So just uh, I was trying to be as neatly as possible so I don't mix uh, with the previous color on his face. And I will paint uh, all the facial hair with this color as well. We will start uh, highlighting our model now. So I will start with the black parts first and then I will use uh, Administratum Grey. So I will thin this color a little. And then uh, I will just do edge highlights on all the black parts because they are super small on these models and you already have a nice uh, shade from the contrast paint. So just uh, edge highlighting will do the job here. Uh, to start highlighting the pants, I will first go back to the Dead World Forest and uh, just uh, repaint the pants, but still I will leave all the shades intact and all the darkest area and recesses still uh, dark from the shade. For the final highlight, I will use the striking green and uh, I will apply this as an edge highlight. So only on the most uh, raised areas of the pants and the folds uh, or as well his pockets on the back. Just a very small highlight that will just uh, sharpen his pants and just make it like more striking. start uh, highlighting his armor, we will go back to light sea blue and uh, reinforce the armor. So just uh, paint all the raised areas of the armor, like let's say 80 to 90 percent of the previous color should be covered with this. Uh, leave the recesses with the shades and all the most deepest parts of the armor still black. Now I will start adding sky blue to the mix. Uh, first I will add a little and then I will paint like 80% of the previous color and then I will add a little more sky blue to the mix and then I will paint uh, even less and then I will add uh, more and then I will paint even less and I will try to move uh, my light towards the most raised areas to the source of the light like on his shoulder plates and on the knee pads and on those side knit pads at the top, as well on the top of the hammer. Uh, 
and at the end when I'm left with only a pure sky blue color uh, this will be done only as an edge highlight to sharpen uh, those edges then I will proceed of highlighting his tabard uh, so I will go and pick up the Evil Sun Scarlet and uh, I will use this color to cover 80% of the previous color but still uh, I will leave all my shades uh, exposed so I can see them uh, so I won't go very deep into recesses with this color and for the final highlight we will use a wild right red and this will be only a uh, edge highlight on the most uh, raised uh, folds of his tabard For all the leather parts we will use a scrag brown and uh, this will be done by stippling with the pointy edge of your brush just uh, around uh, the sharp edges of all the leather belts so you can draw a little lines or little dots just to create the worn leather effects so just do every single one of them in the same manner These clothes straps on his hammer, I will use only one highlight uh, with a pink horror and this will be like an edge highlight. Uh, you can choose it, it will be a lower on or a upper part of the straps. Just do all of them in the same manner. Going back to the silver parts, uh, we'll go back to the chrome and then we will do edge highlight with this. This is really small highlight but it will really uh, pop your hammer uh, because the shade darkened this color a lot so when you do the same color it will really pop as a really good highlight and as well don't forget the buckle on the middle of his uh, chest as well now I will start to do some glazing on his uh, cloak so I will go back to the ashen grey and I will add a good amount of water to this color so it flows like really nicely so it's uh, like a wash consistency but one level thicker from the wash and then uh, you will do this in the multiple coats on the most raised areas of the cloak so uh, try to cover like maybe 80% of the cloak with this color it really looks bright now uh, but after it dries it will darken then I will add uh, Dawnstone first I will mix it with the uh, previous color and uh, glaze it on the top areas as well and then uh, after it's dry I will just glaze it uh, pure downstone as well this color looks a lot brighter uh, when it's wet but after it's get dried it will darken and then you will get a really nice transitions on your cloak Before I start painting his white armor panels, I will go back to the red bone and I will just reinforce uh, all the white panels and do uh, some tidying it up uh, on the old sides of the armor. After that is done I uh, will use uh, Apothecary White and just apply one uh, thick coat around all the white panels and I will apply this color straight from the pot so I won't add anything to it and I will just keep the consistency. Uh, I just want to note to you just to be careful and not to mess all the previous work we done all around. Uh, 
while that is drying, uh, just to save time, I will paint this rock that he's standing on uh, with a uh, Mechanicus uh, standard grey. Uh, one uh, thick coat uh, will be enough for this, because uh, we will at the end anyway cover it with the snow, so it really doesn't matter. Now it's time to work on his uh, fur on the back and I will show you a nice technique how to paint uh, the fur to be a real realistic color. So first uh, I will pick up the scrag brown and then I will paint the outer edges of the fur uh, with this color and I will add a little water so it still uh, flows nicely and it's still a wet so I can uh, blend it with the other color. Then my second color will be Murfang Brown and I will just add it as my mid-tone and on the edge I will blend it with, uh, with the Scrag Brown. So just uh, add a really nice uh, like thick coat and then just uh, try to smudge it on the edges and, and blend these uh, two colors together. And then I will use uh, Rhinox Hide as the last color, so this will be like the most deepest uh, recess of the fur and the shadow, so like very close areas to the armor and uh, areas uh, just under his hair. And as well uh, add a little water to it and then uh, blend this together with, uh, with the Murfang Brown on the edge. So if you think it's somewhere too darker, just add a little Murfang Brown and then just go over it and just blend it together so it looks like even and the transition will be good as well. While I'm waiting for the fur to dry before I highlight it, I will do a one nice highlight on his hair. So I will use a Joker Orange and I will just use the side of my brush and highlight uh, all the threads. And as well, don't forget to highlight his facial hair with this color as well. Now going back to the fur. So I will use a Screaming Skull and I will mix it with the Morphang Brown. So this will be a 70% Morphang Brown and 30% of the Screaming Skull. And uh, I will just highlight uh, all the pieces of the fur, so you can go all, all around individually and uh, put uh, one uh, highlight on each one of them. And when I still have a Screaming Skull, I will use this opportunity to paint the clothes of the, uh, of the bear paws at the end of the fur. To go back to our little rock, uh, we will just shade it with uh, some dark wash. We can use non oil uh, or agroxer shade or some dark tone or a black tone, anything that you have, just, just shade that rock. And to slowly finalize our highlights, uh, it's time to do the armor. Uh, we will use the Ultuan Grey and uh, we will cover 90% of the previous colors of the armor uh, with this one. So this is the most critical moment and like because everything around this is already painted. So try to be as neat as possible and uh, just take your time, take a deep breath and uh, do these highlights. And for the final highlight I will use a white scar and uh, I will apply this as an edge highlight only. So this is very small highlight to be honest. Just on the most uh, raised uh, areas, use the side of your brush against the sharp edge and just pull uh, one thin line. And now it's time to mark the armor. So we will use Evil Sun Scarlet and then we will just draw these uh, two decorative lines that he have on his uh, bracelets or those uh, arm, uh, armor, how do you call it? 
and uh, I will use this color as well to paint his war paints on his face. So just uh, use the like two thin coats to have a nice and even coverage. So just don't worry if you go inside the air so uh, his uh, eye sockets uh, because we will paint them after this. Easy trick to paint his eyes is uh, I will use a white scar and then I will paint uh, inside the eye sockets everything with the white. So add a little uh, water to the white so it flows uh, good and then just fill up the eye socket uh, with that white color. And then after white is dry I will use some dark wash, uh, non oil with dark tone and just uh, fill up the eye socket with the, with the wash and uh, don't go too heavy but do a, a solid wash and then wait it to dry now it's time to uh, do the highlights on the face so I will use the Kislev flash and now I will uh, highlight all the raised areas of the face but I will still be careful about that red markings and uh, try to not uh, do too much of it. And to finalize the eyes uh, I will use uh, just any black and just take your sharpest uh, brush that you have, take a deep breath and put that uh, one final dot on the eye. The last thing that we will do today is to draw that uh, decorative sign that he have on his uh, shoulder plate. So I will just use uh, Retributor Armor and just uh, first I will sketch it a little with my smallest brush and then I will just reinforce it. Uh, my model actually have it on the right shoulder uh, armor was uh, already engraved but the left one uh, I think it didn't mold it properly so I had to freehand it. And that's it, our model is completed. I will transfer him to the base that I already pre-made for him. I will include the link in the comment uh, below. And uh, that's it. Uh, guys, uh, thank you for watching if you stick uh, all the way to the end. And if you like this video, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, make the comment below if you like to see me doing something else. Uh, paint some other army or some other character model or uh, change something else in my channel. So this is all for today. Uh, stay safe and uh, bye bye.